So tonight is about Jesus, guys. That's why we are here. It's about Jesus. I said it's not about your position. It's not about your title. Until we drop these things, we won't encounter Jesus really. If we approach Jesus with titles and positions and names, we will not encounter him. So we have to come, drop our titles, drop our positions. We can't have pastors and bishops that are, what's the word, bishops to God. Rather than them to be bishops and pastors to us, they are bishops to God. So they even find it hard to worship God. So we'll come to a church. The pastor will say that the church should be a worshiping church, but the pastor himself is not a worshiper. And he's the type that when worship starts, he's sitting down, receiving something. I don't know. I'm sure he's receiving, so it's okay. <laughs> but then you want the members to be worshipers when it should actually flow from Aaron's head, Abby, to his beard and downwards. But you want us to be worshipers and you will not be. And most times it's because we've actually not, we've maybe lost the understanding of who Jesus is to us not understanding that the posts we have or what position they give to us is not for us to give back to Jesus and come to him as a pastor. We don't come to him as a pastor, as a bishop. We come to him as a child of God. But to the people, we can be bishops and pastors and reverend, whichever one we want. Holy Ghost, only you are my obsession. Where is Chimdi? <laughs> so it's not going to be about the songs tonight. It's about Jesus. If you want to experience him, If you want to see him, you can. But you have to look to him and not us. And it's the assembly of God's people. So it's okay. If you feel like shouting, shout. If you want to shout in tongues, shout. If you want to lie down, lie down. Whatever it is you want to do, you believe the Spirit of the Lord is leading you to do, do it. At least don't come and sit down here. You were sitting at home. You have come. Don't come here to and sit down. Engage Jesus. Don't come and look. If he's looking, you can go home and sit down, enjoy yourself, look. But if you've come here, come here for business and do it. So if you're led to pray in the Holy Ghost, pray. Whatever, don't limit yourself. Break some protocols. Tonight. Okay, my mic is having feedback. So I'm the type that also believe that 
We don't know how to pray as we ought. The Spirit makes intercession for us. I also believe strongly that I don't know how to worship. I, saw, I don't even know how I do it. But by the Spirit, it is possible. So if it is possible by the Spirit, can we engage Him? Can you pray in the Holy Ghost? Speak in the Holy Ghost. Sing in the Holy Ghost. I told you you didn't come here to play. I didn't say momo in the Holy Ghost. I said speak. It is the assembly of God's people. Speak in the Holy Ghost. Encounter Jesus tonight. What you want. Encounter him. Speak in the Holy Ghost. Speak in the Holy Ghost. Set your gaze upon Jesus tonight. Narrow down on Jesus tonight. Narrow down on Jesus tonight. Forsake everything else. Narrow down on Jesus tonight. Forsake everyone else. Narrow down on Jesus tonight. Let him take you over. Let him quicken your mortal body. No matter what the condition is with you, even if your body is tired, your body is sick, even whatever it is, your body is tired, your body is sick, the Holy Ghost can fix it. The Holy Ghost can fix it. The same spirit that was in Christ dwells in you. That same spirit, not a fake one, that same spirit that was in Christ dwells in you. So engage that spirit. Let him quicken your mortal body. Let him quicken your spirit. Let him quicken you to yield to the spirit quickly. Because the earlier we yield to the spirit, the quicker we will get in. So let him, let him, allow him. Pray in the Holy Ghost, allow him. The quicker we go, the better. Don't look at anybody. You want to be a different in your generation. You want to make a difference. You want to be different. You have to encounter Jesus. The same way Saul encountered Jesus, you have to. That kind of encounter that changes everything. That when people see you, they will definitely say yes. They will say yes, you have been with Jesus. You have to encounter him tonight. Tonight. So that we have people that are burning for Christ and really doing the work and not just mouth. The world is waiting for us to manifest. Truly. It's not about having churches everywhere and no effect. That's not what we're about. Jesus is not confined to church. Jesus is not confined to your ideas. Every time you put him in that confine, you lose out because you don't get anything when you put Jesus in your mind, in a box. So encounter Jesus. Encounter Jesus. Fix your gaze upon him. Stop looking about. If closing your eyes will help you, close your eyes. We are here for business. Let the Spirit of God speak through you tonight. Encounter Him. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Out loud. These things are not by magic. We build up our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Things don't happen by magic. They don't happen by magic. There's a way it happens. And you have to tune in. There is no magic in our kingdom. There is no magic in our kingdom. We are people that are deliberate. We are people that are desperate, intentional. That's who we are. If you are like Jacob, you hold on to God. You will never miss him. So don't join the bad wagon of people that are shouting the name of Jesus without nothing to show for it. We are not that people. We have to walk in power. We have to walk in revelation of who Jesus is 
and the revelation of Jesus brings result. The revelation of Jesus brings result. So if there's no result, we are not seeing Jesus. The revelation of Jesus brings result. Everybody Jesus encounter, they had a result. When Jesus encountered people, he left something with them. He left substance with them. You have to be people that leave substance with people. You have to go to a place and leave substance there. Don't be empty. Don't be empty. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Out loud in the Holy Ghost. We 
say thy kingdom come we say thy will be done here in this room as it is in heaven we say thy kingdom come we pray thy will be done here on earth Lord, we worship you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we give you praise. Father, we sing your name. You are worthy of our love. Worthy of all our attention. Worthy of the longing of our hearts. Jesus, we worship you. Sweet Spirit of a living God, we welcome you. Oh, we welcome you. Spirit of our Father, Spirit of truth, Spirit of might, Spirit Spirit of power, we welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you. Take your place. Glorify the name of Jesus. Glorify God the Son. Glorify the living Lord. Glorify the great I am. Spirit of a living God. You are welcome in this room. You are welcome in our lives, oh, in every heart. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Oh, somebody pour your love on Jesus. Don't get tired, pour your love on him. He's the one who died. He's the one who rose again. That we might live life abundantly. So Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we honor you. You are the reason we are here. To behold your beauty, Jesus. The wonders of your love. The wonders of your power. The wonders of your grace. You are setting captives free. Healing every disease. Jesus, we are here for you. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. You are the bread of life. The fountain of living water. He who was alive and was dead and is alive forevermore. The root and the offspring of David, King of kings and Lord of lords. We worship you. I'm 
To receive all glory and honor, reach his dominion and strength. We bow before you, Jesus. You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words. Who is like unto thee? Son of the living God. Hallowed be your name. Great and mighty God. Hallowed be your name. All sufficient one. Hallowed be your name. Shepherd of my soul, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name, great and mighty God, hallowed be your name, all sufficient one. Hallowed be your name, shepherd of my soul. Hallowed be your We sing, Hallowed be your holy name. Hallowed be your name. Great and mighty God. Sufficient one, hallowed be your name, shepherd of my soul, hallowed be your One more time, hallowed be your holy name, hallowed be your name. great and mighty God, great and mighty. Hallowed be your name. You are the all-sufficient one. Hallowed be your name. Shepherd of my soul. Hallowed be your name. Here before your throne, most holy, almighty God, loving Father, loving us all, for you we pour our love in song. Sufficient one, hallowed be your name, shepherd of my soul, hallowed be your name. Oh, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name, great and mighty God. Hallowed be your name. You are the all sufficient one. Hallowed be your name. 
You're the shepherd of my soul. King, 
Jesus, he's here. He's here in our midst. He's here. The Son of God is here. The Lamb of God is here. Oh, the Lion of Judah is here. here the Lord of Lords is here fountain of living water soon come and keep Bishop of my soul oh how I love thee Lord oh how I love you Lord come and pour your love on him pour your love on him He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of our love. He's worthy of all the honor. He's worthy of thanksgiving. Pour your love on him. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why should I fear when I have you surrounded by your love, your everlasting love? Why should I fear what people say? They don't know what you mean to me. Why should I fear when I have you surrounded by your love, your everlasting love? Oh, why should I care what people say? They don't. the parable the person that has been forgiven much is the one that really loved much oh how my soul loves Jesus he changed my life he can change us too if you let him come in he will turn your life around Jesus can say, only Jesus can say, only Jesus can say, only Jesus can deliver, only Jesus can say, neither is there any other. Upon the name of Jesus, there is no other name by which we can be saved. Just call on him. Jesus come in and he will save your soul and he will save you now he washed me he cleansed me with his blood he will do the same to you if only you open up he's the same yesterday today and forever Jesus lover of my soul thank you thank you is the sunshine fair as still the moonlight and all the twinkling starry host but Jesus shines brighter Jesus shines pure
Be will I cherish Jesus thee will I honor thou my soul's glory joy and Jesus thee will I cherish only thee will I honor your my soul's glory
Jesus, my all in all. You are sweetness to my soul. Jesus, my all in all. Hey, you are sweetness to my soul. Jesus, my all in all. You are sweetness to my soul. Jesus, my all in all. Yeah, you are sweetness to my soul. Jesus, my all in all. You are sweetness to my soul. Jesus, my all in all. Oh, you are sweetness to my soul. Jesus, my all in all, you are sweetness to my soul. Jesus, my all in all, hey, you are sweetness to my soul. Jesus, my all in all, hey, you are sweetness to my soul. Jesus, my all.
always just the same Oh, praise His holy name That is the reason why
There is no 
help for your soul. The only person you have who sticks closer than a brother is Jesus. He's the only one that sticks closer than a brother. Jesus.
admit that I am a sinner. I ask that you will receive me and wash me of my sins. I believe that you died and you rose again. I thank you and I receive you as my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone that put up their hand, this is the first step. We had to do it so that you can go in. So you have received Jesus as your Lord. And if it's okay by you, you can put down your names if you want before you leave. And I'd like to have them. And so you've crossed the first step. Every child of God that receives Jesus is given the gift of the Holy Ghost to perform here on earth, to walk the walk easily. So I believe we are all on the same plane now because we have all received Jesus, right? We have all received Jesus. So praise God. Praise God. We are all saved in this room. Praise God. We are all saved in this room. Praise God. We are all saved in this room. Praise God. Thank Him for salvation. sinner Jesus a relish Jesus you are the friend of the sinner Jesus you know I said that we are all children of God in this room because if you didn't put up your hand it means that you were born again and if you weren't and you didn't put up your hand sorry That's all I can say, sorry. Because there is an opportunity to give yourself. Yes. Yes. Our generation needs to be rid of the world. The world has taken over us. And he did it in a subtle way. We didn't even know. We are engrossed with things that are not important. We've been taken over with things that are not important. We do activities in the name of Jesus, but leave the Jesus away. That is the truth. I'm one that likes to agree quickly. There's no need, you know, struggling with it. When it comes to me and God, I agree quickly. I can't, I can't deceive myself. I know where I'm not up to it. So there's no need for anybody to make me, you know, say otherwise. I know where I'm not at. And I look to Jesus for help. 
we've been carried away the world has taken us over and we've lied to ourselves that you know we are in the world we should dominate the world and all of those things and really we are just enjoying the things of the world We are being controlled by the things of the world. There's nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with enjoying things. They say, seek first the kingdom and the righteousness. And every other thing will be added. And I jokingly say, including weak. It's part of every other thing. It will be added to you. So it's not a problem. But don't lie to yourself. When the world is swallowing you up. Don't lie to yourself and say you are still okay. Don't. Because it will be costly. It will be costly. Manipulated to suit what we want to do. So far or so long, he has a Bible verse you can quote from. It's okay. And you clearly are not approaching the Word of God for insight, but just to. I said thank God that we are all born again in this room so we can tell ourselves the truth I will call my friend Pastor Chintok to come don't clap there is no need just talk to us as believers let's be true let's be true hallelujah focus on Jesus keep your eyes on him just keep your eyes on him he's the sweetest note in seraph's song is the sweetest name on mortal tongue is the sweetest car the song is Jesus blessed Jesus is the sweetest 
note in Sarah's song is the sweetest name on mortal tongue is the sweetest God roll ever song is Jesus blessed Lord we acknowledge that no one can know you except you reveal yourself Lord, reveal yourself to us tonight. Open our eyes. Cause us to see. Please listen to me for a few minutes. I began a quest to find Jesus. I'm not talking about getting born again. I'm talking about finding Jesus. And the moment you will understand it, because I started to find out a few things about him in scripture. First and foremost, I found out that first, God needed to correct my impression of who Jesus is. First, his eternal nature. Jesus was not created by God. He is God. It's the first thing you must know. He's not an inferior God to God the Father. Register it in your heart. If not, many of the things that he did will not actually become true to you. Jesus is not the second kada of God. No, he is not. And I'll tell you from scripture. John saw a revelation of him more, long after he had gone. And then he began his book by introducing him again. And he said, in the beginning was the word independent existence the word was with God corporate existence the word was God inseparable existence it means that listen so in the beginning there was not talking about a starting of time it was talking about a beginning that was no beginning because if God ever began when he began is when Jesus began but because God never began, then Jesus never began. He is not inferior to God by any means. The second thing you need to register in your heart is that if there is a member of the Godhead that created the earth, it's not the Father, it's Jesus. John chapter 1 verse 2, All things were made by him. And without him, there was nothing made that was made. To confirm it, if you go to Hebrews chapter 1, Scripture says there, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past to our fathers by the prophets, had in this last day spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So, Jesus, it wasn't God the Father. Because many of us think of Jesus from the beginning of his earthly manifestation. That's the beginning of your error. He had an existence in the Father. Listen, Paul captured it in Philippians chapter 2 and said, even though he was equal with God, he did not consider equality with God anything to hold on to. So Jesus is not any less God than God is. Oh, I wish somebody heard me. That's why one of the errors you have to confront in your generation is that people are telling you you cannot worship Jesus. He is as worthy of worship as, listen, I found out. Ah, I don't know how to say this one. I, I found out that God couldn't say, Jesus, come and go for us. God asked, who will go for us? And whom shall we send? He had to, of his own accord, say, here I am. Send me. Listen, that's why in Philippians chapter 2, the Bible says that he did not consider equality with God anything to hold tightly onto, but 
He made himself. God didn't make him of no reputation. He made himself of no reputation. You need to listen to this. He made himself of no reputation. What did the Bible record as no reputation? Taking upon himself the form of a man. That means that all that you saw in Jesus, especially in those three and a half years of his full manifestation, was an insult to his true image. So when you worship him and you are saying, he walked upon the sea, hallelujah. That's not story. Walking upon the sea was inferior to his nature. You need to understand it. Because if you don't understand it, you don't know the worth of what was paid for you. Somebody has to reintroduce Jesus to us. Listen. Tosin, he was done. When he finished his work, he lifted up his hand in prayer. I believe that should be John 16. And he said, Father, everything you have assigned for me to do, I have now done glorify thou me now with yourself with the glory that I had with you from the beginning meaning the glory that he exhibited on the earth is nothing in comparison to his true glory so don't sit down and think that it was such a difficult task for him to do the things that he did on the earth so why did he do what he did why did he come First, that has been sorted because he found out that man could never find his way. We were lost and we would never find our way. From the fall in the garden, generation after generation, God has permitted light and darkness to live on the earth. And unfortunately, darkness always swallowed up light. No, no, you didn't hear me. I said unfortunately. In every generation from Adam. So Cain and Abel met. Cain killed Abel. God gave them set in place of Abel, which Cain killed. And then generations later, listen, Cain was giving birth and building a kingdom. Seth was also giving birth and you were going to suppose that the sons of Seth will also build a kingdom. Then you will find in Genesis chapter 6 that the Bible says that it came to pass... When men began to multiply and fill the earth, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Listen, in that, God created a clear division between the house of Seth and the house of Cain. And then the Bible told you that this thing did not begin with you. In every generation, people who are born of God seem to always be looking into the world to find their patterns. That was when God said, my spirit will not strive with man any longer. Because he also has become flesh. Then the Bible says, but Noah was a righteous man. Excuse me. Where were the rest of the sons of Seth? Darkness has swallowed them. Listen. I started that way so that I can tell you that it is possible for darkness to engulf an entire generation. Your generation is not the first. By the time you travel to Genesis chapter 11, you also see another generation that darkness fully engulfed. In that one, there was no witness left. The people is one, and whatever they propose to do in their hearts will be granted them. And what did they propose to do? Let's raise a tower that will rise up to God so that we can confront the authority of God. And God said, if we don't go down, these guys will do it. It's, sometimes it is important that somebody calls your attention to the fact that in the earth, too many times, darkness has swallowed up the sons of light. God entered a covenant with Abraham. The rest is story. He calls all of Israel out of Egypt, but Egypt never left Israel. So God buried all of them in the wilderness. So listen to me. God knew that man would never find his way. So God released Jesus in the earth first for redemption. Because if the man that fell 
was a perfect man and had blood. The man that can redeem has to be a perfect man that has blood. So God bypassed the natural seed of man and gave a new seed like it was in Adam. And then Jesus came and died. But that's not the end of the story. You need to know Jesus. Today, you have to know him. I'm glad that like my sister said, everybody is now born again. So we're not talking at the level of salvation. We're not, I'm not talking from there. Listen to me. So suddenly, Jesus is now dead. But then we wake up to find out. Peter said he lived in this life, living for us an example that we may walk in his steps. We woke up to find out that everything he did in the flesh was not revealing his Godship. Everything he did in the flesh was revealing how we ought to live. So let me say this to you. It means that the true test that you have come to know him is that you are living the way he lived in character and in power. It's easy to speak about the way Jesus lived in character. That's the reason why there's a lot of hypocrisy and pretense in church. When we meet together, everybody wants to look like what they think Jesus looked like. So we thought that he was some quiet guy who was greeting everybody, bless you. You saw the wrong Jesus. If you saw the right Jesus, you will know that character is not, is not a particular emotion or temperament. Character is permitting God to find expression the way he wants to find expression in the face of a circumstance. That means if God is angry and you are happy, you are in sin. Somebody didn't tell you who Jesus was properly. I confronted the government recently on my page and then somebody said to me, Pastor, Pastor, you're supposed to be praying for government. You're not supposed to. Then I sent him Jesus. They came to him and they said, Herod seeks your life. He said, tell that fox. That's my savior. When a man is a fox, we tell him he's a fox. Jesus said, tell that fox. I walk today. I walk tomorrow. On the third day, I'm perfected. There's no way Herod would have understood what Jesus was saying. He stood in front of Pilate and Pilate said, do you think I'm a Jew? I can give your life to you. Jesus, with all the wounds on his body, laughed. I looked at Pilate and he said, no man takes my life from me. I lay down and I pick it up again. Uh, he's not your mate. He's your brother by choice. But he's your God from all eternity past. You must understand it. Let nobody downgrade Jesus before your eyes. He did everything he did just so that he can live for you an example. So that you will know that when you are beginning to attain the life, this is what you see. The signs shall follow them. So if we live in a signless generation, it is actually the indictment against us in spiritual places that we do not know the Jesus we claim to have. I say it again. If we live in a generation where the salt has been thrown out and is trampled underfoot, it is evident that we have not arrived at the knowledge of the Jesus we gather on to every Sunday. It then, let me say the way to pain you, it means that most of your Sunday services are a waste of time. I'll say it again. Most of the places where people gather on Sunday in the name of Jesus, he doesn't even have the recognition of. He didn't show up one bit. We only followed our order of service and we sang good songs, we made good music, we preached one message we heard on TV. Jesus didn't speak to nobody. If he did, the streets would not be the way they are. We have to move out of this religion. And I have no problem with church. I pastor one myself. 
And time after time, I have to stop and ask the one who sent me, Lord, are you satisfied with my sacrifice? Are you satisfied with me? If there is any other thing that you want from me, I will give to you until you are satisfied. Lord, are you satisfied with my sacrifice? Are you satisfied with me? If there is any other thing that you want from me, I will give to you until you are satisfied. Unfortunately, many of us who are priests are distracted. We are distracted by the things that are not supposed to distract us. Listen to me tonight as we ignite a fire in this place and permit an atmosphere for the Lord Jesus to reveal himself in his glory. I said somewhere recently, I owe no man nothing. So I have no reason not to preach the truth. No reason. Neither am I looking for anything from any man. I've never begged anybody to host me. I'm not looking for anything from any man. Listen to me tonight. It then means that God had one standard and one standard alone in his heart. The standard is that them that he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus the Son. Them that he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son. Every other quest in church is invalid. Every other message in church is invalid. Everything must spring from knowing Christ the way he is and representing him again on the earth. Let me say this as I begin to find a place to close. The scripture that we use the most at salvation, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14, he said, the love of Christ constrains us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died so that they that live will not henceforth live unto themselves. Listen, let me give you the picture. It means that this is your reasonable response. That if truly, because all of us are saved, it then means that we agree that he died for us. The day you say he died for me, you lose the right to live for yourself. You lose the right to pick up a job by yourself. You lose the right to marry a woman by yourself. One of my daughters came to me and she said to me that somebody asked her out and she was supposed to answer him. And this was what she said to him. She said, I have asked the one who owns this body if he wants to give you the privilege of sharing it with him. And he said, yes, so I will marry you. Listen. You can't hear that kind of girl and think she's under pressure to marry. She's not. You stand in front of her, the first thought running in her mind is will he still permit me to carry my father's agenda? If he cannot, then I don't need him. I don't pick up a job because of how much it pays. I pick up a job because it is my opportunity to represent Jesus. Listen to me. Even the first Adam did not walk to eat. He ate to walk. Oh God. I wish you heard me. I said the first Adam, he arrived at a garden fully furnished. So if Adam was lazy, he would have just laid down there and year after year after year, the trees would have been producing. They are trees. So you would have always had food. But the Bible said that God made every tree with seed bearing fruit. So every time Adam ate, he met a seed in it. Then he knew that it was his responsibility to replenish the earth. So every seed of what he ate, he had to find a way to dig the ground, open it and cover it because generations are coming. One of the things I fear presently in church is that there's no legacy for generations coming. 
There's nothing that will look like Christianity when they arrive. And don't tell me it's impossible. Go to the UK and the US. They'll tell you the story. We've got to raise a different generation. And tonight, sincerely, I don't carry an indictment against any generation. Our fathers did their best. They worked according to what they knew. Plowed the earth. They are the reasons why we can be saved today. But a generation has to wake up and say, if we go on like this, soon God will have no witness on the earth. So tonight, Jesus said, when he was about to leave in Acts chapter 1, he said, tarry in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then he said, you will be my witnesses. Listen, this is the ultimate point in knowing Jesus. My witness is, is not that you will go around and share the story of the things that happened when I was here. That's not what he meant. You will be my witnesses means you will live on my life. My life will continue in the earth because how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Tarry in Jerusalem until you be anointed with power and you will receive power after that the Holy the same elements that made Jesus Jesus when he left he left the same elements with us meaning when we stand in judgment God will judge us for the extent to which we did not conform because everything God gave to Jesus to do everything that he did was given to us our generation has no excuse when we stand before God because we've got the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ we've got the love of God our Father and we've got the deep communion of the Holy Spirit Jesus said the things that I do you will do and greater because I go to the Father what he meant was that I had the help of the Father and the Spirit but when I return to the Father you will have the help of the Father myself and the Holy Spirit you have no reason so I decided that I'm going to be a witnessing generation that I my life will bring him glory because this is what I know Behold what man of love the Father has lavished on us. That we should be called the sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be like. But we know. Somebody say we know. No, no, say I know. Say I know. When he shall appear, I shall be like him. Listen, as I close except a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies it abides alone but when it dies it brings forth multiple it is injustice I've said this again and again everywhere I've had the opportunity to it is injustice to the grain of wheat that is planted if at harvest what is harvested looks any different from what is planted how you know it is time for harvest is that the maize in the air looks exactly like the corn that you planted. God cannot plant Jesus and reap Chintok. God planted Jesus. What he will reap when he returns is the full image of Jesus. It will no longer be Chintok that lives. It will be Christ living in me. Saints, I leave you this way today. You must tell the Lord. Please lift up your hands where you are and speak with God. Tell him glorify yourself in my life. No, no. It's not a prayer you pray casually. It's not a prayer you pray casually. Glorify, glorify. Glorify, glorify. Glorify. Glorify your name. Glorify, 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 glorify your name. Glorify, 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 glorify your name in all the earth. Glorify, 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 glorify,
glorified, 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 glorify your name. Oh, I suppose you are praying where you are. Glorify, 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 glorify your name.
beaten the quality of Jesus so much so that so much so that the old prophets the king said let everyone worship the God of who? the God of Daniel he needs to be glorified that much in your life that they will say let everyone worship the God of Tosi let everyone worship the God of Chimdi let everyone serve the God of David he needs to be that evidence in your life generation they didn't have the Holy Ghost so how did they do it that is what I want where everyone will say I will worship the God of Victoria that the God she serves is true the God she serves is real the God she serves is alive, is not dead. It's not dead. He's not dead. He's not dead. They need to see Jesus in you. If not, there is no point leaving. If Jesus cannot be seen in you, there is no point leaving. No point. No point leaving. 